Um, my name is Erica Nye, a virtual communication coordinator here program. This is the first time we have a webinar, um, so it is a test, but we also hope to be give, getting you a lot of good information today. Uh, we are a little overwhelmed that we are seeing just shy of 100 online attendees, which is fantastic. We also did receive dozens of questions on the user forum in preparation for this session today. Um, we're going to try to get to as many of those questions as we can. But please, please rest assured that if we don't answer your question today, we will be responding to it on the user forum. And we really invite the whole community to you know, communicate on the user forum, discuss some of these topics, especially the ones that aren't so clear cut, uh, where you might have differences of opinion or have different strategies for dealing with um, sampling and, and weighting in your analyses. Um, we're gonna, I'm going to be turning over the microphone to the panelists in just a minute, but let me let you know our, our schedule for today. Um, you're going to hear a brief presentation from our sampling experts and then from our um, analysis director. Those presentations have been informed by the questions that many of you have already posted, and I see a lot of you on our um, attendee list today. So hopefully you'll start to have your questions answered even within those presentations. After those presentations, we're going to go to some of the questions that you have asked directly um, and give, try to give you some very clear-cut answers. And then we'll be looking at the chat window to see additional questions, uh, follow-up questions, points of clarification, anything else you want us to address. Uh, I will tell you that we know we have more content than we can possibly cover in this 60 minutes just based on the questions that we've already gotten in. So we're really trying to highlight the questions that we think are going to be relevant to the largest number of people um, and that can be sort of easily discussed in a webinar type setting. Again, if we don't get to your question, we will be following up on the user forum. Um, before we get started, I also would like to announce that we do have a second webinar planned already in July, and the topic in July will be on GIS data, that's geographic information systems and spatial data issues. Uh, we will be promoting a specific time and, and date for that in the coming weeks, but if you have questions on that, you can start thinking about that right away. Um, lastly, I'd like to ask that you all stay online with us until the end of the session. At that point, we're going to open up a survey window that will ask you for feedback about today's webinar experience. As I said, this is the first time we're doing a public webinar like this, so we really do want your feedback about what has worked well, what hasn't worked well, and we'll be soliciting your input for future topics. So if you have a specific topic in mind, we'd really like to hear from you. Okay, I'm going to start with a brief presentation from the DHS sampling team. In the room we have Drs. Rulin Wren and Dr. Mahmoud El Kasabi, and it's Mahmoud who is going to be starting with our presentation on sampling and the DHS survey process, which will hopefully frame today's conversation. Mahmoud, I'm turning it over to you, and uh, for those of you who are logged in online, you'll be hopefully seeing the PowerPoints and hearing Mahmoud. If you don't, please chat in if there's a problem. Thank you. Thanks, Erica. Uh, hello, everyone. In the following minutes before we answer your questions, uh, I will share with you the main aspects of the sampling design in most of the DHS surveys. In most of the DHS surveys, we use a stratified two-stage cluster sampling design. In the first stage, we select a probability proportional to size sample of enumeration areas. In the second stage, within the selected enumeration areas, a systematic sample of households is selected. Now, you might ask, what is the enumeration area? The enumeration area is a geographical statistical unit created for a census and containing a certain number of households. A typical enumeration area can be a city block or a village. To select a sample of enumeration areas, you need a sampling frame. Usually we use a frame of enumeration areas prepared for the most recent population census. The selected EAs are called sample clusters. After the selection of the sample clusters, we need to perform a household listing process in which all the 
all the residential households in the selected clusters are listed to create a frame of households for the second stage of selection. Finally, after the household selection, we interview all the eligible members. Now moving to stratification aspect of the design. Stratification is a process by which the survey population is divided into subgroups or strata that are as homogeneous as possible. In most of the DHS surveys, the cross-classifications between the country administrative regions or subdivisions by urban and rural residents compose the sampling strata. You always can check the sampling design in Appendix A in the DHS report to learn more about the sampling strata. As you can see in the figure, we have four sampling strata. Within each stratum, the sample is designed and selected independently. Now note that strata should not be confused with survey domains. A survey domain is a population subgroup for which separate survey estimates are desired. For example, urban areas or rural areas. Survey domains and the strata may or may not be the same. For example, in the previous example, if the survey estimates are desired for each region, the country regions are considered as survey domains. And enough sample size should be assigned for each region. However, if the survey estimates are desired for urban and rural areas separately within each region, the survey domains and the sampling strata will be the same. Introducing the sampling domain concept naturally takes us to the sample, des sample size required to produce the survey estimates. From our previous experience with the DHS surveys, we know that to produce reliable total fertility rate and mortality rates, we need about 800 to 1,000 completed women per survey domain. Other indicators in the DHS may require a smaller sample size. The total sample size should consider the number of domains. Sample allocation has to take this minimum sample size into account. In other words, enough sample size should be allocated for each design domain. In the following example, we will see how to allocate a sample of 4,000 women over four sampling strata. Assuming we have a country of 10 million households distributed as in the table, for sake of simplicity, let's assume that we have on average one woman, one woman per household and that we have 100% household and, and individual response rate. Using the proportional allocation, the sample will be allocated proportional to the size of each stratum. If the survey estimates are desired for the two regions only, this allocation will be satisfying. However, if the survey estimates are desired for urban and rural areas within each region, the survey domains and the, sample and the design strata are completely coincide. And so the proportional allocation will not be enough to achieve the survey objectives. To guarantee enough sample size for each survey domain, we should undersample the large domains, the first two, and oversample the small domains, the last two. This can be done by the power allocation where the sample allocation is proportional to a power value of the household population. The power can be any value between 0 and 1. As you can see in the table, now all the domains have enough sample size to produce the DHS key indicators. Assuming that we will select a fixed number of households, 20 households per clusters, the following will be the cluster allocation over the sample strata. 
So far, we have covered the main aspects of the sampling design. Now we will move to the sampling weights, which are reflection of the sampling design. To understand how the weights work, we should note that each selection stage is accompanied by selection probabilities. These probabilities should be considered in calculating the sampling weight. As we can see in the figure, we have a first stage selection probability, P1, and a second stage selection probability, P2. We also have a household response rate, which can be considered as a response probability and should be used in the, in the, in the weights calculation, as we will see later. Once we select the sample clusters in the first stage the select the, and select the sample households after the household listing, in the second stage, we will have selection probabilities, P1 and P2 for each sample cluster. The multiplication of P1 and P2 is the overall selection probability, P. The inverse of the overall selection probability B is the design weight D. This design, can be this design weight can be calculated even before the field work. During the field work, some of the selected households may refuse to participate in the survey or might not, or might not be at home during the survey time. To adjust for the impact of not interviewing these households, we divide the design weights by the stratum level response rates. Finally, as a DHS tradition, we normalize the weights. The main objective of the normalization is to make sure that the summation of the weighted cases equals the summation of the actual completed cases. Note that the normalized weight is a relative weight, not valid for estimation of totals and not valid for pooled data. Finally, note that the weights are case dependent, not variable dependent, which means that the survey weights can be used to produce any kind of indicators using any study variables. However, you need to use the proper weights, normalized or unnormalized. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mahmoud. Hopefully that helps us have an overall view of the process that DHS uh, samplers go through with implementing agencies in country to design the survey um, and gives us an idea of the over and under sampling that happens. Now I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Tom Pullum, who's going to talk about how these adjustments are dealt with in analysis. Um, he is the director of analysis here and has responded to many of your questions already on the user forum on these topics. Tom? Thank you, Erica. Uh, good morning or good afternoon or good evening, uh, wherever you are. This is kind of like being on the radio. Uh, this part of the webinar will overlap a little with what you have just heard. But now we're mainly interested in how to adjust for the design effects in the analysis. I'm a Stata user and will use some Stata terminology, but we'll try to be more general. Wait, that's yours. Okay. <clears throat> the, um, I'd like to start with a motivating question uh, for this overview. In the Guide to DHS Statistics, I'm quoting a question that came in. It is not recommended to do weighted analysis if one is attempting regression analysis, but I have come across another point of view. In other words, this uh, um, uh, user is uh, wondering um, whether we follow the recommendation in the guide to DHS statistics uh, or whether we uh, wait. DHS has a long history. When the guide to DHS statistics was prepared, the main statistical packages could not include weights in all types of statistical analysis and could not adjust at all for clustering and stratification. 
Please disregard that comment in the guide to DHS statistics. The adv advice in the next version, which is being prepared now, will be different. Most users of DHS data, including analysts at DHS, do adjust for weights as well as for clustering and stratification. I will mention that some users, usually economists, um, prefer not to use weights. We recognize this, but today in this uh, webinar, we do not want to debate the issue of whether or not to use weights. There are definitely exceptions, however. If your purpose is to examine the sample in its own right, rather than to use the sample to make population estimates, then these design effects can be ignored. For example, data quality analyses will usually give equal weight to every observation. When checking recodes, looking for extreme values, verifying skip patterns, etc., these adjustments do not need to be made. Now a second uh, motivating question. Several people have asked about how DHS data differ from simple random samples and how the adjustments correct for that. I think this is really the fundamental issue for the analysis part of this webinar. How does the design that Mahmoud described differ from a simple random sample? All standard statistical estimation and testing procedures are based on the SRS assumption. A simple random sample has two defining characteristics. First, all cases in the population have the same probability of appearing in the sample. Second, each case is sampled independently of all other cases. A multi-stage cluster sample, such as a DHS sample, deviates from these assumptions. My answer will be in three parts, on the weight adjustment, the cluster adjustment, and the stratification adjustment. I will include uh, some user questions within this overview. The weight adjustment. The population is stratified into geographically defined areas for which separate estimates of the outcomes are described, desired. Usually the strata are all urban and rural combinations of the region variable. In other words, all combinations of HV024 and HV025. Then, relatively speaking, the larger strata, in terms of population size, will be relatively undersampled, and the smaller strata will be oversampled, as Mahmoud described. That is, the distribution of the sample across the clusters will be more equal or uniform than the distribution of the population. To compensate for these unequal probabilities of selection, the oversampled areas should be weighted down, and the undersampled areas should be weighted up. If you do not weight, then all the means, proportions, rates, regression coefficients, etc., will be biased toward the oversampled areas. But if weights are used, then the means, etc., will be unbiased estimates of the population values that you would have obtained from a simple random sample. That is, you would have obtained unbiased estimates from a simple random sample. The rates depend on more than just the strata, but all components of the calculation are intended to eliminate bias from the weighted estimates. That is, the weighted estimates will be unbiased. Here's a question. <coughs> Could you please talk about weighting for different types of outcomes, for example, for diarrhea or for malnutrition? My answer to that question would be that weights are specific to the cases. They have nothing to do with the outcomes or predictors. This is, however, a common misunderstanding of the weights. To repeat, the weight is a characteristic of a case and is not linked to the variables, except for the way in which certain variables may only appear or may only apply to certain units, households, women, men, children, couples, etc. Another question. So we have it there. Um, go back. No, you're going. Go back. 
Another question, uh, for which there may not be a slide, is when to use weights, how to use the weights when subsampling for analysis. Oh, it's on the same slide. How to use the weights when subsampling for analysis, for example, only using women of a specific age range. The answer would be that the same weights would be used for a subsample that are used for the full sample. All of the design effects apply in the same way uh, throughout, regardless of which part of the data you're using. Um, in Stata, the weights are always renormalized so that the sum of the weighted cases is the same as the sum of the observed cases in whatever subsample you're working with. You do not have to do that step. Okay. Now the cluster adjustment. Clusters are enumeration areas, generally equivalent to villages in rural areas or neighborhoods in urban areas. The reason for using clusters as the primary sampling units is to reduce the cost of data collection. However, when clusters are used, the SRS assumption of independent observations is violated. The clusters are independent from one another, but the households within the same cluster are not independent. They tend to be similar. There tends to be less variability in a cluster sample than in a simple random sample. For example, because, all the, because the clusters are some, sampled from within the strata, and the strata are all urban or all rural, everyone in the cluster will be urban or everyone will be rural. There is no within cluster variation in this characteristic. There may be relatively little variation in type of source of drinking water, for example. For other variables, there may be a lot of variation within the cluster, but there are almost no variables for which the variability is unaffected. The adjustment for clustering is equivalent to scaling the non-SRS sample down to a comparable but smaller SRS sample. I think of this adjustment as reducing the effective sample size. In the smaller or effective sample, the values, the values of the means, proportions, rates, coefficients, etc., will be unchanged. The only effect is on the standard errors and confidence intervals. What you usually will see when you add the cluster correction is a tendency for the following changes in the results. Standard errors will increase. Test statistics will get closer to zero. P-values will increase. Confidence intervals will get wider. These are the kinds of changes you would have if you had a smaller sample. The cluster ID code is V001 or V021. These are exactly the same. This code is embedded within the household uh, ID and the case ID. The stratification adjustment. A stratified sample is actually better than a simple random sample because you force the distribution of the sample across strata to match the distribution of the population across the strata. Strictly speaking, to match the distribution of the sampling frame. This is not affected by the undersampling or oversampling. You are making the sample more efficient, effectively increasing the sample size. The adjustment, again, will not alter the estimates of means, coefficients, etc., as with the cluster adjustment. As with the cluster adjustment, the only effect will be on the standard errors of estimates uh, with the kinds of changes that are listed in this slide, which are the opposite of what was listed for the clustering adjustment. To repeat, the stratifica stratification uh, correction, the stratification adjustment, will usually tend to reduce the standard errors. There are occasional exceptions. I encourage you to test the effect of these adjustments for specific models. Uh, first, for example, do a regression with no adjustments for the design. Um, Repeat with just the stratification adjustment. Repeat with combinations. Compare the results in terms of coefficients, standard errors, significance of covariates, overall measures of fit. This uh, exercise will give you an idea of the impact of the adjustments.
that is the end of Tom's initial presentation. Um, I do have a point of clarification from a uh, participant. Um, okay, so you said we can use the same weights for the subpopulations. Is it also true when we limit to the time frame, let's say births in the past two years? Yes. Yes, Tom is saying yes, that is also true. Um, a second quick question, and then I'm going to stop taking questions until we get through some others. Um, discussion suggests distinct strata are defined by region X, urban, rural. Is it then acceptable to conduct analysis within a single stratum, such as populations drawn from stratum rural, province A, or stratum urban, robin, region Z? Uh, yes, you can, you can do a separate analysis within uh, one of those uh, strata. And, uh, uh, there'd be less variation in the weights within the stratum than uh, across if you do an analysis that includes uh, several strata. Um, but uh, you should include the, the design effects. Um, I, don't, uh, I don't see any reason why uh, you couldn't do that. In general, the weights are uh, the same for everybody within a cluster. They will vary uh, within a stratum, but they don't vary within a cluster. Great, thank you. We're going to move to some of the questions that we got in the last couple of weeks from users, many of you of whom are on the, um, on the, the web link now. Um, we had some similar questions from two users about the fact that we can link DHS data with external data. So users wondered, should sampling weights be dropped in this case? And another user asked, when combining surveys for a single country spanning multiple years with the intention of making comparisons across years, how do you properly weight the data? So we've indicated a, a very brief answer here on the slide, but I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Rulin Wren to expand a bit. Okay, thanks, Eric. Uh, for the first question, I suppose uh, your uh, main analysis data is still the survey data. If this is the case, uh, it's just that you borrow external data. So your, your analysis should follow uh, the principles of analysis survey data. Since the sampling weight reflects the sample selection mechanism, weight is necessary for any analysis of which influences the total target population. Uh, for the second question, when you combine your surveys, either from different countries or from the same country from different time, uh, you still need to do a proper treatment for the sampling weight. It's the denormalized of the sampling weight. Uh, for example, for the surveys in the same country from different years, the sampling fraction can be different. So the normalization will have an effect. You need to denormalize the weight. Thanks. Great, thank you. Um, let's go to the next question. Several users have asked about which weight to use, for example, the household weight, the woman's weight, etc., when there is more than one version of the weight variable. Uh, Tom is going to expand on this. Usually, there's no uh, ambiguity about which weight to use because you're working with the household file or the, uh, that is, the HR or PR files. You're working with the uh, individual women in the IR file. But this wish issue comes up if you merge files and, and then you have uh, more than one weight in the same file. Uh, the general rule in such cases is to use the weight from the units that tend to have higher response rates and non-response rates. That's very important, higher non-response rates. So let's go to the next uh, slide. I think there's a list coming up. Um, so uh, this is a, a list of uh, priorities. When you have uh, more than one weight in a merged file, um, which one you would use. It's important, for example, in the couples file, which actually will contain both V005 and MV005, you should use 
MV005 because the um, uh, non-response tends to be higher for men, and that's the limitation on the formation that is the uh, uh, presence of a couple in the file. Uh, most common examples where you come up with uh, with ambiguity. Um, so as I said, the couples file MV005, and whenever you have linked the HIV data to individual cases, you use HIV05. Great, thank you, Tom. And I want to point out, we will, of course, make all of these uh, files available to everyone after this, so don't scramble to take notes if you're panicked. Um, I also want to point out, I am seeing the questions that are coming in, and several of them we have planned to respond to shortly, so I'm going to push some of them off. But one question that I do want to um, ask quickly of Tom is, Tom, can you, um, can you explain briefly what it means to denormalize weights? Hello, can you hear now? You just reconnected. Yay! Okay. Okay, Tom. We so basically, can you go back to uh, denormalize weights? Okay, the question was about uh, what does it mean? When is it necessary to denormalize weights? Um, the um, normalization refers to a change uh, in simply a factor uh, of the weights. Yes, uh, craving, all of the weights have been normalized to have a mean of uh, 1 million. That is, the normalized weights are multiplied by 1 million. And this is simply to produce an integer um, which has many significant digits. Uh, now you have to um, modify the weights under some situations where you're combining files, uh, multiple files from the same country, or perhaps pooling files from uh, multiple countries. Uh, perhaps you are trying to produce estimates of national uh, numbers, which you do not uh, encourage, but sometimes this uh, is uh, desired that you produce, for example, Should we unplug it and replug it in? Where is your plug oh. red? Well, we're still we're still talking. Leave it on the table. Leave it on the table. Leave it on the table. Yeah. Okay. Leave it on the table. So I don't know how much of that answer um, was actually transmitted, but maybe we better move to another question. Why don't you move to the next one? We'll see. Don't 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 touch it. Don't even move it. Don't move it. Um, is this a room end question? There's something. It's not recognizing the. It's it's thinking it's me. All right. Try say something. Uh, go ahead. Yeah, hello. They hear me. Did you quit? No, they hear me. Let's. I think for some reason the microphone is being picked up only from my laptop even though we have it turned off and we have the other one turned on. So I'm going to move my laptop to Reven and see if you can hear Reven through my laptop instead. Okay. Uh, so 
This question is uh, uh, regarding the disaggregation of uh, DHS data to know the original level. The, the original question, I would like to use DHS data to calculate development outcomes at the local level, clusters or sub-national administrative areas. Should I still apply weight, same thing weight? Uh, first, uh, the, it's a uh, problem uh, of disaggregation of the DHS data. If you read the DHS final report in the Appendix A, we claim that the survey is designed to provide representative results at a national level and at a survey regional level. So further disaggregation to the northern regional level is not commented and uh, recommend and it's not guaranteed. You may end up with a very small number of cases. So the uh, outcomes will be not reliable. Uh, but if you want to calculate uh, any estimations in sub-national uh, areas, uh, you need also use the same thing weight. So use the same thing weight is always recommended. Thanks. I'm going to try one more sound check real quick. Okay. So uh, here's a related question. Uh, several users have asked whether estimates at the district level are acceptable. Districts we think of as uh, the second subnational unit, subdivisions of uh, regions generically, although there may be a different name given to these units. And uh, if you rate, then your estimates. Uh, at any level of aggregation will be unbiased. That is, on the average, the, um, uh, across all possible samples uh, done in the same way, your estimates would be equal to the population uh, parameters. However, um, you get at the district level, uh, you get into a high, you have a high chance that your selected clusters are not really representative. So uh, in the long run, you might say they will be unbiased. But when you're dealing with only a small number of clusters, it's, uh, uh, it's likely to be uh, some deviation from the population values. So uh, take a look at how many cases you actually have in these units. And if you uh, are able to, you have a large district which, with many clusters, or you are able to combine several uh, adjacent clust, uh, districts and get an estimate at that level, uh, that may be uh, fine. This is a judgment call. Tom, go over the denormalization rates again, because nobody heard that answer. I guess OK, I, I guess that. Uh, uh, you missed what I said about denormalization of weights. Uh, the normalization refers to an adjustment by which the mean weight is room. And Stata does this automatically. Uh, for example, you do not have to divide, v, divide V005 by 1 million. If you're using Stata and a P rate option, then uh, Stata will automatically do that division. You, if you were to uh, adjust the rates by multiplying or dividing them by any constant, it would make absolutely no difference to how Stata interprets them. But the denormalization issue comes up in, I can think of, of two contexts. In one of Okay, we should be back. Okay, I, I'm sorry about these technical difficulties. Seems to be something about the denormalization question <laughs> that causes things not to operate normally. Uh, excuse me. So maybe we better wait on that one. Should we turn to another question? 
I think that one's hard. Okay, this one. Uh, uh, okay, these questions are uh, asked in general where do I find the information on which covariates underlie the sample selection for each survey? Uh, and uh, uh, next to geographical distribution of urban rural are household selector and uh, which the assigned weight assigned based on other covariates like ethnic uh, ethnicity, family size, to ensure that the sample is nationally representative. Uh, actually, uh, this, for, the, for the sample design, sample selection, you can find the details in the sample design document, which is usually uh, in the final report. It's called Appendix A. We give a detailed sample design. Usually, uh, the covariates we use in the sample design is the region, urban rural for stratification. And for sample selection, or for the PSU selection, we you, you would use number of households in the uh, in the EA. Uh, we do not use other covariates in the sample design uh, because of the DHS prefer a geographically representative sample. Uh, the second question in the selection of households and the which in the households we do not use any covariate. The households are selected based on uh, a equal probability systematic selection. Uh, if uh, uh, you are talking ethnicity groups, uh, you should be very careful because the sample is not designed to be representative for, for specific ethnic group, especially when it's small. Thanks. Um, let's take this question on Stata and then I'm going to go to some of the chat questions because there's still a lot of, of chat questions happening. Go ahead, Tom. Uh, this is the question. Uh, several uh, users have reported that SVY set does not work properly, uh, particularly um, uh, you get a, a message saying that there's only one observation and the run terminates with an error message. Um, let's go to the next page. Uh, you may not be familiar with an additional option for SDY set, which is single unit. And this is uh, an addition to earlier versions of Stata, uh, beginning with uh, Stata 13, I think. Single unit with centered scaled or certainty in parentheses, um, these are, these will prevent your run from crashing in most cases and uh, they, the difference between them is, is very small. Uh, sometimes what I have done to try all three and uh, see if they tend, to, how, how big a difference it makes, which one you use. Um, but the default I generally use uh, now is uh, centered. Uh, a lot of the chat online is still, uh, believe it or not, about normalization of weights. Um, we have follow-up questions, not so much that people didn't hear, them, uh, but it sounds like we need to cover some um, let me, so there's one question, are you saying that if you want to conduct an analysis pooled across multiple surveys within a single country and data, all you have to do is append the data sets and then fit the regression models with a variable denoting the year of the survey? Uh, no, we are very cautious about pooling multiple surveys. Uh, I should have, have added that caution. I think the, the main problem with pooling multiple surveys is that you do not have a well-defined reference population. Touch. The um, uh, surveys are in different years. Even if they are in adjacent countries, these countries may not be a well-defined uh, region. There are much bigger issues uh, in pooling than, there are, uh, than just the, the issue of the weights. 
if you do insist on pruning, sometimes um, uh, it seems like there's no alternative to get enough cases for analysis, no alternative to, to pooling. You have to be very cautious in the interpretation, but um, you uh, would adjust the weights. I would adjust the weights anyway if I were to proceed in such a way that uh, each of the surveys would count equally. Uh, this is not the only way to proceed, however. It could be that you would like the surveys to count in proportion to the population of the country or the uh, number of women in the country or whatever it is you are working with. Um, if you do that, then the large, largest country will completely swamp the smallest country in, in most of the situations that I've seen. For example, if you wanted to combine countries in sub-Saharan Africa and you inflated, um, in effect, through the rates, inflated uh, the surveys to be proportional to the size of the population, then Nigeria would uh, swamp everything uh, else. Uh, so, uh, you would not, however, want to just use the uh, sample size of, uh, I would think, that a pooled estimate that was based on the original weights would um, um, have such an arbitrary element to it. Each survey would be, in effect, weighted in proportion to the number of cases in the sample, uh, which is a very large arbitrary element to it. I'd be very cautious about that. There's been a lot on the website on this issue. It sounds like we could have a, an entire webinar on this topic, but I'd like to give Raymond a chance to respond also to this, this issue from um, a sampling perspective. Uh, okay, thanks, Erica. Actually, uh, Tom will just uh, explain uh, the effect of uh, normalization and denormalization. If you do not uh, uh, treat appropriately, it will affect your analysis results. Uh, from the sampling uh, aspect, uh, the, the normalization of the sampling rate is not necessary. But it's just a tradition of the DHS. We use the normalized weights uh, from the very beginning. Uh, so the normalization actually is equivalent uh, to multiply the sampling weight by the estimated sampling fraction. The estimated sampling fraction is the number of interviewed units divided by the estimated total population size. So this uh, fact of normalization is survey specific. For example, even different surveys in the same country, the sampling fraction can be different. You can have a larger sample size in the previous one or a larger sample size in the current one. So the uh, normalizing effect, the estimated sampling fraction is a parameter, it's survey specific. So we will pull surveys together, either from different countries or from the same country. Normally, you should uh, perform the denormalization. The denormalization means uh, you, you need to divide it by the uh, estimated sampling fraction. This will request you to get a good estimation of the population size at the time of the survey, for each specific survey. Okay, so let me clarify. Several people are saying, you know, how to de denormalize the weights, and you're saying Everyone, that you normalize the weights by dividing by the estimated sampling fra fraction. fraction. Yes. Okay. Um, is there any documentation available for denormalization? <clears throat> there have been uh, discussions in the website. Uh, I've posted some code. Um, basically, uh, you can do this by specifying what you would like to be the target total. For example, um, of the rates. If you do not want the total rate to be the total number of observations, uh, but you'd rather have the total rate for a survey to be, say, one-tenth of a combination of ten surveys, then um, you multiply uh, 
the rates for that survey by that target number divided by the observed total weight, that is the calculated total weight, uh, before uh, that adjustment. Uh, and then this would give equal weight to the 10 surveys, and the total weight for the 10 surveys would be the total number of observed uh, of, of observations across all 10 surveys. That's one way uh, to do it. Now, we're also going to be posting a, um, a PowerPoint presentation that we use in workshops, analysis workshops, and that will uh, include specific commands to do this. So uh, I'm not sure that that's available now, but it will be available shortly. Yes, and let me, um, let me clarify again, too, that many of the questions that are coming up now, including this denormalization question, these, these questions have been answered on the user forum. Uh, if you're not familiar with the user forum, it is userforum.dhsprogram.com. To post a question or respond to a question, you have to register, but it's a very simple, free registration process, basically just a username and an email. Um, but if you go in there and search the term denormalization, you'll see several threads come up, and this will also these materials will also get added into the user forum, so that searching for any of these things will be um, easy. We're getting a note that sound is gone, but I'm not sure that that's from everybody. Okay, everybody's other people are saying it's okay, so we're going to keep talking. Okay, great. Um, I also want to point out that. The DHS program has a YouTube channel, youtube.com slash DHS program, and we've posted a lot of tutorial videos on that uh, channel, including some introductory videos on the basics of sampling and weighting, and we have additional, more advanced topics planned for the future. Um, I do suggest that you check some of those out for the basics, and certainly as you all ask more questions um, in settings like this and on the user forum, that will help us prioritize what kind of materials need to be prepared next uh, that would be useful. Okay. I'm looking just to see other um, topics here. We only have about four minutes left, so I guess I'm going to ask um, Tom and Raylynn if there are any remaining issues that have not really been discussed in depth today that you wanted to go over, any other common questions you get, problems you see, mistakes people make that might help the users at large um, in, their, in their analysis and interpretation of, of DHS tables. DHS <coughs> Well, there are so many uh, specific questions that, that can come up. For example, uh, let's say you want to do chi-square for a table, and you want it to be uh, a weighted chi-square. This uh, comes up from time to time, and it's, uh, uh, there's a way to do it. Uh, but it's uh, tricky, and uh, uh, someone would have to uh, you, you sort of convert one problem into uh, another problem. Um, the uh, difference between uh, the stata A weights, I weights, P weights, F weights, you have to be very careful. I generally never use A weights. There are occasional situations that they're intended for, but do not use A weight, even though analytical weight may seem uh, attractive. They don't do what you think they do. I weights you should use very cautiously. Um, so the P weights and the F weights in different circumstances, uh, but with the SVY set command, uh, you're using P weights. So read up on the differences between those weights if you're thinking of using anything other than P weights. Uh, well, if there's still one minute, I will maybe answer one Questions are with the from uh, data user. They just ask, uh, can we put the selection probability of the information area in the data file? Uh, actually, I know uh, this information will be very useful for many users, especially when you do bootstrap. Uh, 
but we cannot put the selection probability in the data file because for its uh, uh, confidentiality concerns, according to our IRB, the selected cluster cannot be identified in the data file. But if we put the original selection probability there, especially for small sampling strata, user can can identify the uh, cluster based on the selection probability. Uh, that's a question I think uh, even for later on, we cannot put the selection probability in the data file. Thank you, Raymond. And that actually, that answer um, is often the answer to several questions that we get about availability of, uh, you know, data at at the cluster locations and things like that, we do have to protect uh, the anonymity of all of our respondents. It's part of our IRB. So we balance the needs of anonymity and, and access to as much data as we can possibly provide. Well, I think that's going to wrap it up for us today. I really, uh, we're going to launch a browser with a, a survey. And obviously, we've had some technical problems today. I've noted them. But we would really appreciate your feedback. The survey will take two minutes uh, in terms of what went well, what didn't go well, what we can improve, what you'd like to talk to us about in the future in a setting like this. I hope that despite the technical problems, this was helpful. It's a learning experience for us. And we are really grateful that so many of you joined us today. Um, it has been a really good experience for us. Thanks very much. Please visit the user forum, userforum.dhsprogram.com for all the transcripts from today, the recording, some questions and answers, and all the additional resources that our panelists talked about.